Hey everybody, Forrest here with Fofo Astro, and today we are starting observatory construction. So, pretty exciting day. Um, you guys saw my plan in the last video. We went over that 3D model, and I'm sticking to that. I think a octagonal shaped deck um, with eight support beams, and then one big pier is going to be what I've landed on. It gives me the nice blend of being nice and small, um, and also being very weatherproof so that water that runs down the outside of the observatory should stay outside. So, today's plan is to mark out where we're going to want the observatory to be and then also to start digging and start the process of digging obviously whatever it is nine holes for this thing the pier hole plus the eight supports so let's go ahead and dive in first thing I want to do is show you guys how we go about marking this thing out so to lay this thing out we want to start with our first two points and I'm going to start with the top two points in my drawing Basically, their positioning is pretty arbitrary. We have one point and then we have another point. It's about 29 inches from the first one. So I laid these two points out at the northernmost end of where this deck is going to be. Now, we want those two points to be our reference points for all the rest of the points that we need to dig out because that way we're not propagating our error through multiple measurements. So we're going to get those points laid out, hit them with marking paint, and then all the rest of them we're going to basically use a little bit of, uh, I guess you could call it triangulation to mark them out. This really helps to have a second person. Uh, basically what you're gonna wanna do is have your second person hold the end of your tape measure, uh, two tape measures, the end of each tape measure at that first point and that second point. And you're basically gonna wanna refer to your drawing and mark out where the next point will be. Let's go ahead and look at an example. So you guys can see my first two points right there and right there. And those two points are exactly 29 inches apart. And again, they're arbitrary. So I basically just chose that that will be my first point because I said that's where I want the building to be. I measured out 29 inches and I marked that second point. Now you can use stakes or you can use marking paint. I like marking paint because you can see and get your tape measure right to the center of it much, much easier. But that's just the way that I went about doing it. Now to get the third point, that's what I want to talk about next. So like I said, we're going to want to set the fronts of our tape measures out to the center of our first two points. We're going to want to refer to our drawing and see the distance from those first two points to another point on our octagon. Now this one I've already painted, but you guys can see this was going for 75 and a half inches and 80 inches. And where those two tape measures combined at that point, I moved the tape measures out of the way and I painted that circle. And that's all there is to it. You want to use those first two points as your references, move all the way around and mark out the other six points. I also marked out the pier just by crossing my tape measure and getting a mark at the center where those two points overlapped. And there we go, we got our markings. So that relatively simple, definitely recommend having two tape measures, definitely recommend having a drawing that you can reference. I also definitely recommend having a second person to hold those tapes right at the center of those circles. I also just thought I'd show the finished product. Here we are, all eight holes marked around the outside with the one pier hole in the middle. And you can see this is how you do that triangulation of the position. We always use position one, sorry about the focus, position one and two as our uh, focus points. And then we just triangulate to get our third position as we move our way around. All right, so now we just have to start the digging process. Now in Missoula, the frost line is around about three to four feet. Um, that's, that's basically where we're at. Now I think that's a little bit over, um, okay, obviously, what do I know about building code and whether they did a good job? My point is I'm going to err on the three foot side of that, not the four foot side of that, because we usually don't get cold winters. And if my deck shifts a little bit, it's not the end of the world. The pier hole, that I'm going down four feet for sure, because that I want to line up perfectly. I want to get it anchored down below the frost line. The point being, check your codes in your local area. If you live somewhere where it doesn't freeze, and even if you do live somewhere where it freezes and you're okay with a little bit of settling, you could probably even get away with just laying out concrete blocks at each of the corners of your deck and building your deck on top of those blocks. I really want the security of things that last a long time. I really want this, this thing to be built to last, especially if I'm gonna spend all this time on it. So for me, I'm gonna go real deep with my foundation, make sure it's super secure. And then like I said, the pier hole is gonna go down even deeper. Now, my whole goal is to get all this done in the next couple weeks, because in the next couple weeks, I'm getting an excavator, I think it's like three weeks from now, where I'm actually gonna trench out to this building 500 feet to get wiring and power out here. So that's kind of why I'm getting on this now. Um, in the heat of the summer, not normally when I would choose to dig. But anyway, that's the plan. So we're going to dive into digging right now. I'm going to do a little bit of digging with a post hole digger, see how far I get. I'll catch up with you guys when I'm done. All right, here we are morning of day two. We spent all day yesterday digging. It was very exhausting. Um, those of you who live in Montana or in a rocky part of the country, 
uh, you'll know that digging is not easy. We have very rough soil, at least in my property. So it's basically the top eight inches are basically giant rocks, like fist sized rocks. And then you get below that, you get a little bit of soil and then another band of rocks and then another band of soil. It's a lot of work. So we were managed to dig all eight support holes as well as the pier hole. A couple quick tools that I wanna go over that made this job a lot easier. So first of all, I tried digging things by hand, but the problem is with a clamshell post hole digger, you can only get so low if you're trying to keep your holes small. And I do want smaller holes just because I wanna minimize the amount of backfill um, and just make it a little bit cleaner. If you want small holes with a clamshell, you can only go about a foot and a half deep, two feet deep, something like that. And we wanted to get deeper to ensure that we're getting at least as close as we can below the frost line. So what I did was bought this auger. This is a Predator auger from Harbor Freight. Um, we're gonna live out here for a while and digging holes seems to come up more often than I would think it would. Um, but this thing was absolutely phenomenal. You still have to dig out the first couple feet, or not couple feet, couple inches by hand just to get the auger started. But then this thing was easily able to churn through and loosen up all that soil, which you're then able to take out with your clamshell post hole digger and a shovel, and that made it pretty easy. So you guys can see full 17 uh, cubic foot cart of dirt there. Um, and that was kind of the necessary tools. So it was a clamshell digger to get holes started, then the auger with a six inch bit, and then shovels to help along the way. Obviously the pier hole is larger than what the six inch auger can do. So that was dug out by hand quite a bit with the clamshell digger, but because it was a bigger hole, we were able to go lower with this thing. Now, obviously I would say your results may vary depending on what part of the country you live in. Um, some people, I watched a bunch of YouTube videos, just got their auger down and were digging these like perfect holes with the auger, no rocks, just amazing soil. Unfortunately, that's not the case here. So definitely I recommend, you probably don't need to buy an auger in a lot of parts of the country. Try just digging it out with a post hole digger, especially if you don't need to go very deep because you're not um, in a northern part of the country or at least a part of the country where it gets a little bit colder. Definitely dig a couple test holes before spending the money on something like that. And here is the result. You guys can see all those holes dug out, pier hole. Uh, pier hole still needs a little bit more de depth to it. It's about three feet right now. I wanna get it down to four. One other tool I should mention, is this breaker bar. They're absolutely phenomenal. They basically, it's just a big heavy steel bar uh, with a nice point on it that you can use to um, pull rocks out of hole, deep holes and kind of wedge in there and really get the rocks out. But yeah, here's our excavation. We're all ready to go. So y'all, I think that's gonna sum up this video. That's where I wanna stop this. Our excavation is complete. I think in the next video, we're gonna look at the process of building the deck and the steps involved with that. But so far we've gone through the planning. We've gone through the excavation and now it's time for deck build. So if you guys like this video, I really appreciate that thumbs up button. Hopefully this helped you in some way. If you guys have any comments, leave them in the comment section down below. And lastly, hit subscribe to follow along with this journey and kind of see as I build a next dome observatory. Thanks y'all, catch you in the next one.